Welcome to Stream of Conscience, brought to you by Democracy for America, Fairfield County, where we believe that change is possible and you can make it happen. I'm your host, John Hartwell. Our guest today is Nancy Alderman, President of the Environment and Human Health Incorporated, an organization dedicated to protecting human health from environmental harm through education, research, and the promotion of sound public policy. EHHI is supported by foundations and private donations and is comprised of 10 people who are physicians, public health professionals, and policy experts, including professors at the Yale School of Medicine and the former Connecticut Commissioner of Public Health. Nancy is the past president of the Connecticut Fund for the Environment and has served on the Governor's Pollution Prevention Task Force and the National Board of the Environmental Defense Fund. She's also won awards for her contributions in the area of environmental health. Nancy, welcome back to Stream of Conscience. Thanks. So, several months ago you were on the show um, before the beginning of the legislative session and today we're actually meeting the day after the legislation, legislative session has finished. So, we know what happened and what didn't happen. And when you were here before, we talked about three areas of concern that were going to be addressed, you hoped, in legislation uh, in this session. One was uh, tanning beds uh, and restricting those to minors, or restricting minors from being able to right. use them. Um, uh, wood stoves. No, wood furnaces. Wood furnaces, I'm sorry, not That's wood stoves. Right. Wood furnaces. Right. And um, the, uh, what we call preemption, which is the fact that there's a statewide level of uh, control on pesticides and fertilizers and towns and cities are not allowed to set their own higher standards and, and do more protection against these things. Right. So how do we do? Well, we did really badly. Oh no. <laughs> so anyway, I think what, what might be interesting is to take them one at a time yep. and sort of walk through how how they each happened to not get through. Okay. Because I think it is interesting um, to see how the, how the system works. Yes. So why don't we take tanning first? Sure. Okay. Tanning was important, we thought, to get legislation for minors because um, the science, and, and the science is very strong right now. Mm. The science says that if you use tanning beds before the age actually of 30, you'll have a 75% chance of getting melanomas. So, um, because the pediatricians ask that minors uh, be banned, uh, the uh, cancer uh, groups ask that they be banned, the Academy of Dermatology asks that minors be banned, um, everybody was asking, please get government to ban minors from using tanning beds because the melanoma rates are skyrocketing. And not only is that a sad thing for people's health, but it's also costing us a, a great deal of sure. money. All right. And, so, and, and there are other states where this has already taken place. Uh, only California. Okay. No, n and now Vermont. Okay. But there were 15 states, of which Connecticut was one, which had it on the legislative agenda. Mm. So it seemed to us that this was going to be... Seems like a slam dunk here. It seemed it. Yeah. And we thought of our three bills, this one was going to go because it had all the science behind it. So, and at the same time, the U.S. Congress had done a study and that had just com been completed. And that showed that tanning bed, tanning salons, were not telling the truth about the health risks, that they uh, were not enforcing uh, how many times a week you could s tan, um, that th there were just serious problems with tanning salons, and they did the study in 50 states. Mm. So we thought that combined with the science, it was going to be fine. So um, a bill gets, gets brought up in the committee of which it fits. So tanning fit with public health. Right. So what you do is, over the summer, you meet with public health, you show them your, your documentation, you show them the science. You actually often write the bill that you think is important and you work with them. And then uh, they tell you yes, they will do it or no, they won't. And in this case, they said yes, they would. And so the bill gets a hearing. 
So you go and you testify. So the, the, you worked with them over the summer. And, then and the fall. In the fall. Then the, the session started in early February, right? Mm, correct. And so <laughs> it then goes on the docket of the Public Health Committee, and at some point it gets called. It, yes, it and, gets a hearing. And who's responsible for setting up, a, you know, allowing it past that gateway? Because I know that there are a lot of bills that get put in uh, the hopper at the beginning of a session, um, left, right, and center. There's all kinds of stuff. They have a screening. Here. They have a screening. Okay, and so. they pick the ones that they think are important. And who picks? Uh, in a short session, which is where we were this year, yeah. it's usually the chairman have a lot of control. Right. And the short session is because this is a, supposed to be a budget fixing session. Right. The, the Connecticut legislature is set up in such a way that the, the year that they get elected, they have a long session from January to uh, early June, I think. Right. And then the next year, they're supposed to come back for a very short session and fix the budget, but then a lot of other things get taken care of as well. Right. So. so we have a hearing, yep. and we have people who have melanoma, you know, young people. The hearing went very well. Mm. And, uh, the, you know, every um, group that deals with cancer uh, testified either in person or sent in there. So we thought this was going very well. Mm. So the next step is that it comes out of committee, that the committee votes, and they approve it or they don't approve it. And, um, but what happened to this was very different. So the word comes down to the chairman not to uh, let the bill get out of committee. Oh. And the reason is uh, they're, they're, what they're going to do, and it comes down from the highest levels of the Senate, they're going to have a, a press conference and they're going to get the tanning industry to voluntarily say that nobody under 16 can use a tanning bed and that the people 16 to 18 will have to have parental consent. Mm. All voluntary. Mm -hmm. So uh, the dermatologists would not sign on to that. Environment and human health would not sign on to that. Not after we got the congressional report that the tanning salons don't tell the truth, right. they don't do what they're meant to do, right. And um, how could we possibly sign on to a voluntary thing? And the bill was so simple. It mm -hmm. simply restricted tanning bed use for minors. Mm -hmm. Well, they weren't going to cross leadership in the Senate. And so the bill never came up for a vote. Mm. So here we are at the end. It, it, if it doesn't come up for a vote within the committee that it was raised, it never moves on. Right, uh, so, unless leadership decides to pull it out and do it themselves later on, which happens, but. But it didn't. But it didn't, no, because in this case, it didn't. leadership was not in favor. So here we are, it's the end of the session. Right. There was no press conference. Right. There was nothing. No, so they never did have a press conference never. with the tanning industry. They never did anything. So, um, so that bill is gone, Yeah. which shows, I hope the public understands, all the work that went into it, mm. all the science that was behind it, right. all the people who testified, yeah. it simply was taken out by one senator. So going forward on this particular issue, if someone were interested in this, what should they do? I guess we have to wait till next year and we'll right. try it again. Um, and we'll have to work over the summer or the winter with this one uh, senator mm -hmm. and try to understand why that was done mm -hmm. and what were the reasons and, and how can we come to some agreement. Mm -hmm. So we will do that. Okay. Um, it completely blindsided us. We had no idea. Okay. Now you know. Now we know. <laughs> now we'll move on okay. to outdoor wood furnaces. Yes. Okay. Outdoor wood furnaces are the most serious, immediate threat to human health of anything we have ever worked on, ever. Okay. And the reason is, if you live in one of the 152 towns that have not banned them, and you live in a house that has 200 feet, you could get one of these next to you. And if you do, no one can help you. Mm. You will be breathing in wood smoke 24 7 and you will be looking around for people to help you you'll be trying to sell your house and you won't be able to 
And that's the seriousness of outdoor wood furnaces. So let's very quickly review wood furnaces. I said wood stoves in the introduction, right. which is not the case because right. you're thinking wood stove is something that's inside and it's kind of cute and, and you know. And, and, and an outdoor wood furnace, number one, is outdoors. But number two, it puts out as much smoke, 22 times the smoke as one indoor wood stove. Okay. They're very different. So these are situated outside. In sheds. In sheds, they burn in enormous amounts of wood, and the heat is pumped underneath the ground through a conduit and into the house. And Correct. it actually does heat a house. It heats a house. With something which is natural and renewable. So I'm sure that there are people out there saying, oh, that this is a good thing because right. we're using renewable fuel rather than oil or, or electricity. But it never burns all the way because mm -hmm. it's heating a water jacket in the shed. Okay. So it comes out cold, which means it never dissipates, mm. falls, to almost to the ground and goes half a mile. So the, the regulations in Connecticut are 200 feet. It doesn't protect anybody. Okay, okay so um, this was a modest bill, a very modest bill. This because um, there are people in the state who are powerful who don't want any regulations on outdoor wood furnaces. Um, agriculture, the commissioner of agriculture is quite powerful, timber industry, um, Farm Bureau, uh, they're all very much against any regulation whatsoever. So this was a modest bill cobbled together by the three commissioners, Health, Department of Environmental Protection and Energy, and Agriculture. And it was a small bill, um, but it was going to be helpful. It was going to allow um, these machines to be shut down in the summer. We have people heating their water with them mm. when it's 95 degrees out. So that smoke is, well, okay. Um, and it was also saying that any new outdoor wood furnace that is purchased has to be a newer one. They're a little better. They're not much better, but they're a little better. So it was an incremental small step trying to help, you know, the situation in the state. So. How does that bill work? First of all, what goes in to getting a bill? Mm. Again, in the summer, we met with the Commissioner of Agriculture, asked if there was any common ground whatsoever that we could begin to work. He said none. He would do nothing. And so that was that. We met with DEP. We met with the Department of Health. Um, we tried to meet with everybody who we thought it was a problem. We met with the head of the Farm Bureau. We really worked the summer and the fall. And and I'm the, sorry, when you say we, who, who's involved? Well, in Environment this? and Human Health and, and the lobbyists that we have, who's so you, excellent. So you, you have a group of 10 or 12 people on your... 10. 10. But 10 I people, do most of this. But you do most of it. I do most of the policy. So you're leading a group of experts in a series of meetings with these various people in the... In the both in government and um, in the trade groups. Yes. And you're looking to see if there's a way that we can find uh, some common ground in order to move forward. Yes. Okay. And it, there, it, it, it was clear that agriculture was, there was no common ground. Mm -hmm. So one still had to move forward. So we thought what we could do, um, and the Environment Committee seemed to be with us, that we could ban burning outdoor wood furnaces in the summer. Right. And um, of course we would exempt farmers and agriculture. But for everybody else they would have to heat their water in some other way. So anyway, um, that is in the Environment Committee because that's where it has to start. And um, we keep getting told that we're to wait because the Department of, of Environment really is working this thing very hard, and they have a bill that's a little different than, than just that simple bill banning in the summer. And they did. They worked very hard. I, I just give them so much credit, because I know how hard it was to get agriculture to do anything. Mm. So they worked hard, and they came with this bill. And, and everybody seemed to be happy with it. Uh, environment passed it easily, and then it went out to the Senate. It was a Senate bill. 
And the Senate passed it last week unanimously, unanimously. Not one senator voted against it. Hmm. It looked like they had really come up with a solution to get things a little bit better that everybody could be happy with. Mm -hmm. And especially the people who sell these things, they didn't mind having to sell newer ones. Right. That made the market even better. They're slightly right. more expensive. Right. Everybody was happy. So we thought, wow, we have a bill. So on Tuesday, the day before, the end, it's on the go, the go list means they're going to call it, and it doesn't get called in the morning. And then we hear from local health directors. They're worried about the bill. They're worried that they're allowed to shut these things down in the summer. Does that mean they can't shut them down in the winter? They're worried. Is some of their power being taken away? I thought you were saying before that, didn't, that no one could shut these things down anyway. They have the power. They've never used it. Oh. It has never been done ever. Huh. Okay? So all of a sudden, they're worried about their power in the winter. Yeah. And then the thing isn't called in the afternoon or the evening, and now we move to the last day. And I should point out here that um, procrastination is the, the god of Hartford. Uh, yes. <laughs> that everything is, is done in the last week that's going to get done, um, and it's just a madhouse up there, and people are there until middle of the night. Um, it ends at 12 no matter what. Well, right, but that's on the very last day. The day before that, they oh, could be there until 2.30 right. in the morning, and, they and, were. Then, and then back again at 10 in the morning for, for caucuses. So, so I, I mean, it's, it's, it's dysfunctional. Um, it certainly isn't efficient. And so if you miss, if you, there are plenty of things which die on the last couple of days because they simply can't get there and because someone Well, this is, wasn't just they couldn't get there. Right. Because they certainly could get there. It went on the consent calendar of, of the Senate, and um, so anyway, wake up Wednesday morning. We're now at the last day. Um, this is every, you know, so many people have worked so hard on it, and it's no longer on the go list. Mm. Why isn't it on the go list? We don't know why it's on the go list. We don't understand this. The Council of Environmental Quality has worked hard on this list. Um, they're over there. Our lobbyists, ev everybody's trying to understand what's going on. And... Um, it never happened. So what was going on behind the scenes? It's always what you don't see. Yeah. Okay. So as best we can figure, there were trades. You don't do my bill. I won't do your bill. Right. I can't do your bill. Your bill is onerous. Well, too bad. Too bad. You don't do my onerous bill. You don't get your good bill. Right. So we have that going on. Yeah. Then we have people a little worried about power. Then we had, uh, there were some Republicans that were concerned about the bill. By the time you add it all up, when you're at the last day, we don't want a bill that people are going to talk. We've got to get these other things out of here. Right. That's because at the end, as I said, they're, they're really jammed. They're jammed. And uh, if someone decides that they want to talk a bill to death, not or talk only, it at all. They're talking. They're talking that bill down. Don't, but they're also, don't take up an hour. But they're also jamming up everything that's in the queue. And as you've just said, um, they won't do the, it. The session has to end at midnight by the by the Constitution. Right. So you have behind the scenes stuff nobody can see. Right. And um, you learn later. You know, as I said, we have a few indications that we're trading that weren't happening, that people in power wanted to happen. There were uh, the health department sort of not thinking things weren't just great. And so the bill went. Okay. We lost it. OK, moving on moving now. On. Next. Okay. You'll see every one of these bills <laughs> dies in a different way. OK. OK. Not from lack of work. Or not because these things shouldn't have passed sure. to protect the public's health. These were. One of the things that we tried to do is to look at where people are being harmed and make sure that what we're asking for can be done. Mm. There are some groups that ask for things that you can't do, even if you wanted to do it. They can't be done. We're very careful 
these things can easily be done by the state of Connecticut. So let's talk about preemption, because okay. this, one, this one is dear to my heart, the idea of, of a town like Westport, where I live, and where we have a lot of environmental activists, and where we have a, several rivers running through it and into it, um, being able to say, you know, forget the fertilizer here, or cut it way back, or the pesticides, let's, let's protect the rivers. Um, and we have very clean drinking water in Connecticut, uh, but we won't if we continue to, to, to put things into the rivers, into the water supply. So what happened there? Okay. Now, just to be clear, pesticides and fertilizers are different. Okay. Okay. Um, there was, and this isn't ours, but I will just give you an aside. There was a bill that did pass that controls phosphate mm. fertilizers in 20 feet from water courses. Okay. Okay? So it's very good for lakes and ponds. Yep. Okay. We, that was not our bill, and that did pass. We were doing pesticides. All right. Now, our bill was to allow towns in Connecticut to have their own rules or regulations on lawn care pesticides. Mm -hmm. Lawn care only. Okay. okay. The way it now stands is no town can be stricter than the state. Right. Okay. So that was put in um, and flipped the law. The law is meant to be that the towns can always be stricter than the state. And so tobacco and pesticides flipped it. So we were trying to restore it to the way it was so that let's take your town of Westport. Let's say the whole town didn't want to go organic, but let's say you have a few rivers and you felt that there were some areas in that town that you didn't own because a town can use organic methods on the properties it owns. Sure. But let's say that there was a sensitive aquifer and you wanted that area, you couldn't do it, mm -hmm. okay? You wanted that to be organic, you couldn't do it. So this was a reasonable bill and it was brought before the Environment Committee and they agreed it was a reasonable bill and they brought it up and it passed. Now I have to move you over to another bill. It has nothing to do with this bill. The other bill starts not in environment, which is where it normally would start, but environment wouldn't take it. It starts over in planning and development. Mm. And that bill gives it a very, it takes a great name, but its job is to undo the ban of pesticides on school grounds. I was going to ask you about that, Bill. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that's the job. It's mm. called instituting IPM right. on school grounds. Right. Sounds great. Yeah. It has one purpose. Right. It is they, the pesticide forces have never liked that Connecticut passed a law to ban pesticide use on grammar schools um, K through 8. Right. And IPM is Integrated Peasant Management, and it, it says, you know, you find the best way forward with by, but still being sensitive to, uh, you know, not overusing things. And well, you it, still can use pesticides. Exactly. So if you as a person wants to use IPM in your house and you really mean it, you can find out how to do it and right. do it. You can't legislate it. Right. Because we have one person in the state of Connecticut who works on IPM and enforcement. Right. We have 169 towns. Right. Okay. You just cannot do it. So, okay. these, so these two bills are obviously in competition. Uh, one, well, one bill we were hoping that the one that it's very unusual for a state legislature to undo something they've done. Mm. Very unusual. Mm -hmm. So we were told that it probably a bill to undo something they had said was important would not get done. So our hope was that that bill would get killed and our bill would move forward. Right. But instead? But instead, planning and development passed, passed their bill. Their bill. Mm -hmm. So their bill got out. Right. Environment passed their bill. So, so you, that bill got so out. So your bill got out. So we have two bills out. With diametrically opposed uh, positions. Well, yeah, I guess you could say that. The, the preemption bill really was aimed at, um, not at schools particularly, although... It no, no, be. I understand. It wasn't aimed at schools, but the idea of the preemption bill is to, is to give local control 
And the idea of the IPM bill is to take away the controls that have been put in place and say, you know, okay, use those pesticides if you want. So, right. so philosophically, yes, right. they're, they're coming from 180 yeah. degrees difference. Absolutely, absolutely. So what happened? So what happened was the bills got traded. Yeah. And, you know, the year before what had happened was that Dick Roy from Milford, Rep Representative Dick Roy from Milford, who um, was gerrymandered out of his district, so he's not coming back, so it's okay if I tell the story because he won't be back. But what he did last year, unbeknownst to anybody, he told, every, he told the pesticide industry that he would, he would take in no pesticide bills. He wouldn't take in ones from in the environmental people, and he wouldn't take ones in from the pro-pesticide people. He called a moratorium on all pesticide bills without telling anybody that he was going to do that. Was he co-chair of the Environment Committee? Uh-huh, okay. and so he could do it, and he did do it. And so by the time everybody found out, they were like, huh? So anyway, shocked. So um, ha having had that done the year before and having him tell us he would never do it again, we, weren't, we didn't really think they would get traded, but they, but did. they did. Well, um, So there are three bills killed in three different ways, all there to protect the public's health in the state of Connecticut, and all easily, easily put into law. Well, hopefully in the session next year, <laughs> You'll be back. <laughs> with these same three these bills? Three, yes, with these same three bills, and uh, we'll, have, uh, you know, we'll have some more success. Actually, I, I haven't even spoken to, to uh, our lobbyist or to, to anybody, but what Connecticut is going to have to do next year, and we're going to need everybody to do it, it's going to be critical that we follow Vermont's lead and ban any thought of fracking in this state. Yeah. And that shouldn't be... Democrat, Republican, it shouldn't be environmentalist, business, it should be all of us should protect. We have a tiny state here, and actually um, a geologist has told me we don't have shale, but you can't take anything for granted. Right. You need shale to get out right. uh, the, the gas, natural gas. But still and all, we need to put that on the books, and um, that's got to be next year. So that'll be a subject for another show. Absolutely. And we want to, want to have you back. You're always, you're wonderful. <laughs> you're doing great know. work. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. That's our show for this week. We hope you enjoyed it. You can find all our shows on YouTube by going to YouTube slash user slash DFATVNet. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. Or you can send comments or suggestions for a show to info at dfa-tv.net. If you'd like to learn more about progressive political action, we meet at 7 p.m. on the first Wednesday of the month at the Silver Star Diner in Norwalk. We'd love to have you join us. Remember, change is possible, and you can make it happen. This has been Stream of Conscience, and I'm your host, John Hartwell. Thanks for watching.